السلام علیکم مائی نیم از سادیہ آئی ریڈ ان کلاس فور فوکس ٹروٹ یونٹ نمبر ٹو پیج نمبر فورٹین پپ میٹس آ کونوکٹ مائی فادرز فیملی نیم از پرپ اینڈ مائی فرسٹ نیم فلپ بٹ ایز اے چائلڈ آئی کوڈنٹ سے آئیدر سو آئی کال مائی سیلف پپ اینڈ دین سو ڈیڈ ایوری ون ایلس I say that my that my name is Prip because that is what is written on my father Tom's stone and it is what my sister told me my sister is married to the blacksmith he lived in a marshy area down by the river a few miles from the sea One day I stood in the churchyard and looked over my parents. Tom stone at the dark flat wilderness beyond the churchyard. The marshes were crisscrossed with ditches and mounds. In the distance I could see the gray line of the river and then far away the sea. I w- it was a cold day. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Meera. I read in class for Bravo. Unit 2. Pip meets a convict. Page 15. The cruel wind and the gray sky made me feel sad. I suddenly realized that I was an orphan. I began to cry. Hold your knives, cried a terrible voice. It came from a man who had just stepped out from behind a gray stone. Keep still or I'll cut your throat. This man was frightening. He was dressed in rough gray clothes and he had a big iron chain on his leg. He was an escape convict. His shoes were broken and he had a old red tie round his head. He was dirty from being soaked in the muddy water from the ditches. He was covered in scratches from nettles and stones. He lay and shivered and glared and growled. His teeth chattered, chattered in his head as he seized me by the chain. Oh, don't cut my throat, sir. I pleaded in terror. Tell me your name, said the man, quick. Pip, sir, once more, said the man, straining at me larger. Pip, pip, sir, show me where you live, said the man. Point out the place. I pointed to where our village lay a mile from the church. Thanks. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Juaria. I read in class for Bravo. You know number two, Pip meets a convict, pair number 15. The man looked at me closely. Then he turned me upside down and emptied my pockets. There was nothing in them but a piece of bread. The upside down view of the church righted itself when he placed me on high tombstone. I said, trembling while he ate the bread eventually. Now look here, said the man. Where are your parents? There, sir, said I. The man jumped and made a short run, but then he stopped and looked over his shoulder. There, sir, I timidly said, pointing to the Tom's stone. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Aisha Iman. I read in class for Bravo. Lesson number two, Pip meets a convict. Page number 16. Oh, said the man. So, who do you live with? If I let you live, which I have up my mind about. My sister, sir, 
Mrs. Joy Gargery, wife of Joy Gargery, he blacksmith, sir. Blacksmith, eh? Said she, and looked down at his legs. After looking at his legs and me several times, he took me by both arms and tilted me back as far as he could. Holds me. Then he started into my eyes. Now look here, he said. I needed to decide. Will let you live. Do you know what a fire is? Yes, sir. And you know what grub is? Yes, sir. After each question, he tilted me over a little more. This makes me feel helpless. I was in danger. You catch me a file. He tilted me again. And you catch me a grub. He tilted me again. You bring them pot to me. He tilted me again. Or I'll have your heart and liver out. He tilted me again. I was dreadfully frightened and hoped that he should not drop me. I clung to him with both hands. He tipped me backwards and rolled me around. So then the chart seemed to jump over its uh, own weather cook. Then still holding me upon the top stone, he went on. Only tomorrow morning, bring that file and the grub. You bring the Lord to me. Add that old battery our tear. If you do it, and you don't say a word about me, I will let you live. If you fail or say anything at all about me, then your heart and your liver shall be torn out, roasted and eaten. No, I'm not alone. There's a young man sitting with me. In comparison with him, I am an angel. Thanks. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tuba. I read in class four Bravo. Lesson number two, Pip meets a convict. Page number seventeen. That young man can hear us now. That young man has a secret way of catching at a boy, and at his heart, and at his liver. A boy can't hide himself from that young man. A boy may look his door, maybe warm in bed, may tuck himself up, may draw the clothes over his head, may think himself comfortable and safe, but that young man will softly creep and creep. His way to him and tear him open. I am keeping that young man from harming you at the present moment. With great difficulty, I find it very hard to hold that young man off of your inside. Now, what do you say? I was so frightened, but I said that I would get him the file, and I would get him what broken bits of food I could, and I would come to him 
add the battery early in the morning promise on your life said the man i promise and he took me down from the top of the tombstone now he went on remember and promise and remember that young man and get home good good night sir i stammered it is going to be a long night for me said he he looked at the cold wet flat marsh i wish i was a frog or an eel he hugged his he hugged his shuddering body in both his arms as if to hold himself together and lean towards the low church wall he got over it slowly like a man whose legs were number and stiff and then turned round to look for me when i saw him turning I was frightened again and ran home without stopping. Thanks.